welcome back to 65 Drums. Today I'm doing my full review of the IT M2 Drum Trigger from Helensen. I've heard about this company for a long time, but I just haven't gotten a chance to try out any of their products until now. This video is brought to you by Martin, who watches 65 Drums, who actually lent me a whole set of his drum triggers so I could make this review. So I'm gonna to try to keep this talking bit short and sweet, just giving you a list of the stuff I like and the stuff I don't like, and you can decide whether or not this trigger is for you. This is all just my personal experience with this trigger. Okay, stuff that I really like. Number one is the price. It's only 60 bucks and you can buy it from Amazon. I also like the fact that it's got pretty good build quality. It's got an all metal housing. You can drop it and it'll still be okay. It's got some sort of nice uh, coating, some sort of nice texture on it as well. I also like the fact that it's got a quarter inch input jack on the side. Sometimes companies such as Jobeki go with an eighth inch input, which does have some advantages, but I like the fact that I don't need to buy an extra cable adapter that goes from eighth inch to quarter inch. But there's one thing that really makes this different from most other drum triggers on the market. It's the fact that it has a whole set of controls down one side of it. This is very, very unique. So the top knob here is to adjust the sensitivity of the drum head zone. The second knob is to adjust the sensitivity of the rim zone. Then finally, you have a polarity switch that you can press in if you're using like a rolling drum module, and you can leave it pressed out if you have a Yamaha drum module. It'll just flip the polarity either way, test it, see what works best for your particular drum module. Some drum modules don't have sensitivity controls that you can modify. Sometimes a drum company will say, no one's gonna use this drum module with third-party pads or third-party anything, so we'll just optimize the drum module to work with this exact snare and this exact tom, and they never think, well, maybe someone will try to use that drum module with some drum triggers or something. This gives you sensitivity controls and polarity switches on a hardware level. So that's really, really cool, especially at a $60 price point. So that's definitely a really cool feature set, but to be honest, if you do have a drum module that gives you independent sensitivity controls of the rim and the drum head zones, you're probably just gonna set this to high or maybe medium and then you know adjust those settings in the module itself. Because what I found is that it's kind of annoying to have to take apart your drum every single time you wanna adjust the sensitivity a little bit this way or a little bit that way. Okay, so those are my favorite features about this drum trigger. Now let's talk about some of the stuff I wasn't as big of a fan of. The first is that I feel like this mounting mechanism back here, this gap, could be a tad narrow depending on the kind of screws that you're using. On my snare drum, it was completely fine. But on the toms, I literally had to thread the screws past this gap because it was just barely wide enough for mounting this to my toms. If the screws were any larger, this wouldn't work. Now, of course, that's a small thing. It's just a potential issue you might run into. What I found to be an actual legit issue was the fact that they put the input jack on the side of the trigger. Now, the reason why this is an issue is that because you've got all these wires and stuff here, you're literally blocking a third of the entire mounting mechanism. You might just not be able to tighten that screw depending on where it is. So for example, on the toms, it wasn't an issue because of the heights and everything. But on my snare, I had two screws and because of where they're positioned and the height of everything, I needed to have one screw here and one screw here. But I couldn't tighten down the top screw because there's all these bits of metal and all these uh, cables in the way. So I would have to like half tighten the screw, push it down, and then I would have to put another screw right there and then that could be fully tightened. I wasn't fully securing the drum trigger in the way that I needed to. Another thing that I wish was a little bit different is the fact that depending on the size of the washer on that screw, it could potentially touch the top of that piezo. So I wish it was like covered with a little piece of felt or something. Or they could even just shift it this way instead of that way. Okay, so let's jump ahead to some trigger playing examples.
Okay, so here's what I've tested it with. I've tested it with a 14 inch snare, a 12 inch high tom, 14 inch second tom, and a 16 inch third tom. As far as mesh heads go, I've used a Jobeki three ply mesh head, I've used a Drum Tech three ply real fuel mesh head, and I've used a Drum Tech two ply design series mesh head. So most of the time I was getting decent triggering. However, I did discover that if you played on certain parts of the drum, and if you played at certain low levels of velocity, you would occasionally get extra accidental triggering. So you'll probably have to boost up the re-trigger cancel and stuff like that. I wasn't quite getting as clean of a trigger signal out of this as I do out of my Jobeki side mounted trigger. So basically my overall thoughts on this trigger are, it's at a good price, around 60 bucks. It's got good build quality. It's got some cool sensitivity controls, a really cool polarity switch on it which is very, very unique. And I like the fact that they're using quarter inch input jack. I don't like the fact that this is difficult to mount on certain kinds of drum shells. And I did run into some double triggering. It might be an isolated incident to me, but that's just something that I've experienced with my settings and the different kinds of shells and mesh heads that I've used personally. Okay, so that's been my personal experience with this drum trigger. Leave your own little mini review of this trigger below if you happen to own one of these or if you've tried one of these. Have an amazing day and I'll see you all in a few.